Hey Saints, welcome back. Today I want to talk about light and how we as believers are light. Did you know that when you received Christ, the Lord moved you from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light and at that moment you became a new creation, a creature of light. And so that means that your native born nature now, because you were born again, your native nature now is light. Your home is heaven. Okay, let's look at some of these scriptures that uh, talk about this. Okay, you are light. That's a fact. God says so. And mind you, it doesn't matter if your feelings are not feeling light, if your feelings are feeling dark, if your circumstances are dark, if the weather, if it's dark outside, or if the weather is all cloudy, or if a hurricane's coming through. All of those things don't matter. They don't change the scriptures. The scriptures are always the same, but this dimension is very topsy-turvy, isn't it? Okay, so let's look at Ephesians 5.8. Ephesians 5.8 says, for you were once darkness before, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light. This is reminds me of Romans 8, 1, where it says, therefore, there is now no condemnation. Why does it say now? Because before there was condemnation. And so this is saying, for you once were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. And that's how there can be no condemnation for you because you are light. You are light. Remember, this is all the spirit realm that we're talking about, okay? And we're going to go over a verse that deals with that in a minute. Matthew 5, 14, you are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. So the Lord doesn't want us to hide our light away. He doesn't want us to let the enemy shut us down or let circumstances and masks and all of these things that are going on to shut us down because then he's getting us to hide our light, to put it under a bushel. So we don't want to do that. We want to guard against that. We want to let our light shine. And in order to do that, we have to let the Holy Spirit shine out of us and we want to allow more and more light of God to come into our hearts and our souls and heal us and empower us. Um, 1 Thessalonians 5.5 5 says, You are all children of the light and children of the day. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness. So because of that fact that we are children of light and we do not belong to the darkness, that is where you can have a boundary with the enemy because he is of the darkness. And the more you understand and meditate on and believe and receive these scriptures, the more you're going to realize, no, I'm really in the light. I'm a creature of the light because God says so and because the Holy Spirit is alive in me. Go back to hell where you came from. You know, you can take authority over him because light puts out the dark. We always have the victory being in the light and we always have the power of the light. The enemy hates the light. He runs from it. He's terrified of it. He hates it. So use the light that God has given you, the power of the Holy Spirit inside you, to expose him and to order him away out of your life. 1 Peter 2, 9 is another one. And it says, But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, his trophies, that's what we are, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of the darkness into the wonderful light. So we are children of light. We are born of heaven when we're born again. So now our natural native home is the light. That's what it is if you are a believer. Um, 1 John 4, 17. This is how love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, we are like Jesus. How can he say that? How can he say that? Well, he says it because it's true. And so if we don't understand it, we need to renew our minds and ask the Lord to illumine this verse for us so we can understand it. 
So 1 John 4, 17 is, this is kind of a model of that in a very rudimentary way. Here's the world and the darkness is everywhere, right? Those dark uh, brown lines. But these little lights are the believers, like the believers all over the world. Here we are gathered at our prayer meeting. Here we are maybe at home by ourselves or in the traffic, you know, and, and so this, it would be so many lights that you'd be able to see it if you were up in a satellite or something. It would be very significant. So the darkness is the enemy who is the God of this world. And that's why we are aliens here. And he is our enemy because we're in enemy territory. You got to you gotta remember that. We are living in enemy territory. The world system is his system. He's the God of this world. And then all of the unbelievers or the inhabitants of the earth who are never going to get saved are um, under his spell and they belong to him. So light is these little lights here, the little star looking um, orange things there. And so this is representing Christ. He is light. His kingdom is the kingdom of light. And the believers have the Holy Spirit inside of them, which is a light to the world. And the more in tune we get with the Holy Spirit, the more we can be a light to the world. So get in tune with the, with the Holy Spirit. Believe that you are light because God says you are. And this is at the quantum level. This is in the spirit at the quantum level. It's very true, okay? What will the enemy say and, and say uh, to come against you in this? Oh, you could never be light. You're such a loser. He'll say, how can you be light if you just, and he'll accuse you of something you just did you know, under the law, like he really has authority there. He, he has the authority, but we are not under the law anymore. So he doesn't have that authority unless we give it to him. So don't give it to him. But he will come against you in this. See, he's a bully and he's a manipulator and we're in his territory. See, so that's why he feels so cocky about the things he says to us because we're in his territory. See, so, but just don't listen to him. He um, is not worth your time or anything. Let's talk about Romans 8, 9. This says, uh, talks about um, how you've been transferred and how there's no more condemnation. Then he goes down and says, however, you are not living in the flesh. You are not living in the flesh. This is if you're a believer. However, you're not living in the flesh or controlled by the sinful nature anymore, but in the spirit. You're not in the flesh, you're in the spirit. If in fact the spirit of God lives in you, who is directing you and guiding you. So does the Holy Spirit live in you? If you're a believer, yes. Is he directing and guiding you? Yes. Well, the problem could be, are you not listening? Maybe that's the problem. Whether you're listening or not is a different issue. But the scripture is telling us that we are not living in the flesh anymore because that was darkness. And when we believed, Christ transferred us out of the darkness, 100% out, put us into the light. So we are creatures of light now. Let's read that one again. However, you are not living in the flesh. You are not controlled by the sinful nature, but you are in the spirit. If the spirit of God lives in you, if he's directing and guiding you. So see... That's really good news that the Lord says we're not in the flesh anymore. And even Colossians 2.11 says he has circumcised the flesh off of us in totality and he's nailed it to the cross. What is it, some other verses that we've covered in many other videos that line up with this? Well, all the scriptures would, but in particular, specifically talking about light, uh, 2 Corinthians 5.17. If any man or woman is in Christ, he or she is a new creation, a creation of the light, a light being, right? That's what it's saying. You're not in the dark anymore. You're in the light because I'm light and you're in my kingdom. So get used to it. So if any man or woman is in Christ, he or she is a new creation. The old is passing away and has passed away. Behold, open your eyes and look at this new creature of light. You are the new creation. 
That's what that verse is saying. So this is all good news. God has done all of this. There's nothing we have to do to try to be light because he says we already are light. So what we need to do is stop leaning to our own human understanding, which always gets us off course, and listen to him and say, you know, Lord, you say that I'm light, but I'm so used to relying on my feelings and my circumstances for truth that I'm getting kind of mixed up. Can you please help me? believe this? Can you please help me to understand that you're really serious about this? This is not a joke. This is not a, a cute little uh, Bible verse that I can just study in my Bible and then go off and do something else. This is true and this is real and this is right now. And this is every moment of your whole life. You are light. And so the more you understand and believe that you really are light, guess what? Your behavior and your habits are going to slowly line up with that light. It takes time. It's a gradual thing. So there's no pressure on you. You can just ask, seek, and knock and let the Holy Spirit do the work inside you because that's his job. Okay, I hope this has been helpful and I pray you have a blessed day.